Welcome to the Books on Air podcast. I'm Suzanne Harris, and on my podcast, we talk to the authors about themselves, we talk about their books, and we talk about their ideas. Every book has at least two stories, and we always talk about the backstory behind every one of the books. Joining me today is Becky Halstein. She's here to talk about her wonderful children's book, Tuesday's Story, a book of rhyme for children and pet lovers. Now, Becky, you're rather extraordinary, I think, because not only are you an author, first of all, we've been talking about so many creative projects, you are also a professional photographer. And I know that Mm -hmm. authors write books for lots and lots and lots of different reasons. But Tuesday's story has a very personal reason for you to write this yes. book. There's the story that you share in the book, but what's the story behind this? Why did you decide to write Tuesday's story? And who's Tuesday? Oh, Tuesday was a wonderful little Cocker Bichon that we had. She's white, and she was beautiful and we had her for 14 and a half years and I had to put her down and it was very traumatic for me and then I started discovering all these pictures on my computer and it made me feel better to look at them and then I started putting words to them and then I found myself putting a story to the pictures it was uh It was very relaxing, but it helped me to deal with the death of Tuesday also. And um, then I decided to rhyme the words, and then I decided maybe it would be a nice children's book. So that's kind of, it just grew. It grew with me. (laughs) And it helped me to uh, deal with, with the trauma I had not having Tuesday anymore. It is so difficult, always to deal with the death of a pet. It's just heartbreaking. I know exactly what you mean. I I lost a little old cat, and I still miss him. Mm -hmm. And that Mm -hmm. was one of the things that really pulled me into the book. I love what you've done with this. It's just, when I started to read the book, when I looked at, at what you've done with the pictures, I thought, this is a marvelous book, and it's just perfect for children. <laughs> I love. Yes. How did you decide yes. to do and rhyme? How did you decide to do rhyme? I mean, I just thought that was genius. Well, because i I had started some of it in rhyme, and then the more I did, the better I liked it. Um, some of the words just happened to flow better in rhyme. And like I said, the more I worked on it, part of it was in rhyme and part of it was not. And then I realized, well, I've got to put it all in rhyme. So um, my daughter did help me a little bit with some of it. And uh, <laughs> I appreciated her her expertise. But basically, um, the rhyme just seemed to flow with the pictures and the story. Have you written poetry before? Well, I do cards, and I use poetry in my cards. Now, tell me about your photography, because we talked a little bit about your professional photography. Tell me about the kinds of things that you do. Well, <laughs> I uh, we have a lot of landmarks around here, and I love to photograph the landmarks. We have a Chimney Rock and a Scotts Bluff National Monument, and then we have uh, just rocks formations, kind of like what you see in Arizona, you know, just up out of the ground. So I love photographing those because they are different every time you take a photo. And they're a different color. They're a different uh, shadow. There's, you know, there's snow, there's flowers, there's everything. So I really like doing the, the photo, photography of the, um, of the landmarks. And then um, we do have uh, (laughs) um, the Carhenge in Alliance, (laughs) 
And it's a bunch of cars that have been put in the ground for years and years, and people take pictures of them. Well, I had to get up one morning very early, like it's 50 miles away, and I had to be there at sunrise because the cars are all kind of gray and colorless, but I had to be there at sunrise so I could get the sun reflecting on them. And as I recall, I my fingers were frozen for about half an hour, but I got the pictures I wanted. <laughs> you are talking so, to me like a genuine <laughs> artist. Listen to you. <laughs> this is amazing. <laughs> I knew you had that artist's eye. I could just hear it in our conversation as we were getting ready for the interview. But listen to what you're saying <laughs> now. I mean, I just think that's wonderful. And what a great idea to take all of those photographs of Tuesday, because you started when she was just a puppy, didn't you? Oh, yeah. Yes. Now, how did you yes. decide which ones to put in the book? Because um, it, it, it just seemed to flow. Um, I started at puppyhood, and then she she goes through... You know, getting a little older and a little rowdier. <laughs> and then her friends came along, you know, her her cat friend her cat friends and her dog friends. And then as she gets older, I had to well, it just seemed to flow better from puppyhood to adult mm -hmm. to old age. Was it difficult um, to choose which photographs? No, no, it wasn't. It really wasn't. Um, they just almost jumped just into your wasn't. hand and said, put me here. Yeah, because once I was done with one part of it, then I thought, well, I have to go on to this part. And and then I had to, it goes from summer to cold weather and then, you know, the holidays and then back to cold weather and then, as she gets older, so it had to. It it just had a natural flow to it. I I can't explain it except that it seemed to flow, and the words and the pictures all kind of went together nicely. I didn't really eliminate any pictures. I just once I had the the pictures down, they seemed to just stay where they were. I mean, they needed to be there in that part of the book. <laughs> So it was just a natural, it was natural. That I makes, don't know how else to describe it. No, that makes perfect <laughs> sense to me because that's the way the creative writing flow works is that mm -hmm. it, it just somehow, it's, it tells you, your brain, something. There's, there's something about that kind of situation Anyone who's not, who doesn't have this kind of creative brain thinks we're both a little nuts. But this is, it's, <laughs> it's the way the creative process works. Fiction writers talk like this as well. The, the way that you see things is simply the way that it lays itself out from a creative standpoint. And that's the mm -hmm. way it, it should be. It just, there it is. So that makes perfect sense to me. And I love the idea that you wrote this in rhyme about a dog. And I can see, in my mind, I can see a child sitting with a parent, mm -hmm. a grandparent, a, an older sibling, an aunt, an uncle. I can see them sitting and reading and listening to this rhyme and this story about the dog and your language, the way that you have written the the rhyme, the language is very, very picturesque. And it's very, <laughs> you give very strong images. And so even if I'm not looking at the picture of Tuesday and I have my own dog, if I'm a if I'm a kid, I'm seeing my own dog doing the fun <laughs> things that Tuesday is doing in the book. And so I think that picturesque language is so powerful. And letting children, children love rhymes. They love those little sing-song nursery rhymes. This is what this mm -hmm. is. It has that same quality. And I just think this was so appropriate to write this in rhyme like you did. <laughs> Let's share some of this with the listeners so they understand what we're talking about, please. Okay. Well, the part of the book where she gets kind of um, 
<laughs> she's well it tells you what she's doing she's digging in the mud so it goes with black nose and eyes and often black paws she became a frisky cocker with a mighty cause she dug in the mud her curly spattered locks once clean and white now a grubby mask and socks <laughs> I can and just see it. Get cleaned up. It does say a bathtub and a bathtub grapple and some time we found our Tuesday with much less grime. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. That's so. You can just see her playing and having a wonderful time. Now the the oh yeah <laughs> the picture that you chose for the cover. I particularly like that because she's looking straight mm, out at the person who's it. looking at the book. How did yes. you choose that one? Because she's a puppy and she's got that adorable face and she's looking right at you. She wants you to buy the book and read her story. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, really, she just has that look on her face like, come on, here I am. <laughs> You know, can't you? And that's why I chose it. (laughs) Can't you picture a grandparent or a a older sibling, or even a mom or a dad, or even two kids, reading the book and then putting it down and talking about it? Because it is about an animal. It's about an animal growing up from puppyhood to adulthood to no longer being with us. It's about relationships, the relationship that mm-hmm. you have with Tuesday and how special that is. I can see that if you're reading this with a child, there would be opportunities to talk about different kinds of topics. Now, I'm a former teacher, and so I confess I do see teachable moments everywhere, but if there are elementary or kindergarten teachers who happen to be listening to this, this would be a wonderful book. You could take this and then almost do a unit on the children's pets and see how mm, how different yeah. they are and how alike they are. Absolutely. And the only problem I have with this book is at the end, I always get a little teary. Every time I read through it, I get a little teary at the end, and I can't help it. That's just how it is. But I think, too, it's when you think about how fun it would be to read to toddlers, mm-hmm. I think it would keep their attention because of the words and the pictures. Yes. And beginning readers would really enjoy it because it has that flow to it and has that sound, and it's in the pictures and the puppy and oh my, you know, pets. Can you hear so me shaking my head? <laughs> 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 but it is a fun book to read and then you want to read it again, you know, because it has that flow. I couldn't agree with you more. And I, and I think anyone of any age might enjoy it because it's pets. It's the love of a pet. Well, and, and you know, people love their pets. <laughs> they do. And because of what you've done, I think you could also spur a child or even a parent to put together a project of their own, maybe to chronicle a pet that they have. Oh, if, yes. if they have a new puppy, yes. if someone gets one for Christmas or something, uh, take pictures then and start chronicling mm-hmm. along with that. And then maybe they also begin to write in rhyme about their pet. I mean, I, it just seems mm-hmm. like this would create in a fertile mind just so many different ideas. And I can even see, see doing some handicrafts around this idea, maybe, maybe making a, a collar or something like that for your pet. Oh, As, yes. <laughs> yeah. I'm surprised you that haven't come up nice. with a handicraft book to go along with it because <laughs> you are so creative. <laughs> oh, well, that's something to think about, I guess. <laughs> Maybe book number two. A macrame collar. <laughs> that's it. That's exa- Or knitting something. I mean, a sweater. <laughs> Who knows? You know, I'm sure that we have caught the attention of 
parents and hopefully grandparents and perhaps aunts and uncles and maybe siblings about this book. And I'm sure they're asking themselves, where can I get it? Well, the good news is it's right there on Amazon. Now, let me give you some specifics about how to find the book on Amazon. First of all, if you've never been to their website, you just put in Amazon, www.amazon, on your browser and click, and it just magically takes you right there. And if you've never bought a book, in the left-hand side of the, the box, there's a sort of a long gray box that's empty, and that's your search box. But there's also, to the left of that, another menu. If you drop that menu down, it will say specifically books. Go ahead and choose books. And then here's the specific title of Becky's book. It's Tuesdays, exactly the way you think it's spelled, T-U-E-S-D-A-Y apostrophe S, Tuesday's Story, colon, a book of rhyme for children and pet lovers by Becky, B-E-C-K-Y, Hohenstein. H-O-H-N-S-T-E-I-N. Just put that in. I suspect if you just put Tuesday's story in the search feature and clicked on it, it would come right up. Now, when it comes up, you're going to see that lovely photograph of Tuesday. She's right there. She's a cover girl. She's right there on the cover of her own book. <laughs> and if you'll click on that, the, it, the book will open and you'll get to look at a little bit of the book and you can buy it right there on that page. There's also something that I love. There is an audio portion. All you have to do to hear a little bit more of the book. Becky read some, but this gives you a different voice and lets you hear it in a little different way. Just click on that audio, and you'll hear the voice come straight out of your computer, and they'll read some of the book to you. Now, Becky, I know that Amazon is the largest bookseller, but there are those people who would like to buy their books from somebody that's a little smaller, where else can they find Tuesday's story? Well, Barnes and Noble. I'm sure that I know that's uh, in Barnes and Noble too. Okay, perfect. So all they'd have to do is just do www.barnesandnoble.com and put in Tuesday's story, and I'll bet it would come right up. Well, Tuesday story and my the author's name, my name also. Make sure you get the Hanstein in there. Right? Yes, yes. Yeah, because you, you have to put in the full uh, title and my name. And it'll be there. It'll be there for you. There's one thing that I always like to do, Becky. I always like to give authors the last word about their work. Every author, no matter what they've written, is very passionate about the work that they've done, and they have strong feelings about it. And People will sit down and they will read this book. I don't think they'll just read it once. I agree with you. I think they'll read it more than once. As they read the book themselves and they read it to the child, what bottom line message would you really like for that reader and that child listening to it to take away from the book? Well, the importance of pets and the unconditional love they give to you. And the love you can learn from them and give them, absolutely. Pets are, are wonderful. They, they make your life something more than, than what you would ever expect. And also know that pets are smarter than you think they are. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I'd say the love of pets. I Absolutely. Could, I couldn't agree with you more. And their importance in our lives and their importance in our yes. hearts. I mean, they really do yes. steal our hearts, don't they? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> well, this has just been delightful. Thank you so much for sharing Tuesday with me and with the world. It's oh, just been a pleasure. Well, thank you. A pleasure to talk yes, to you. Yes, it has. Now, remember. And I thank you, too. My pleasure. Remember. You can find Tuesday's Story, a book of rhyme for children and pet lovers by Becky Hornstein at Amazon and on Barnes & Noble. Now, you've been listening 
to the Books on Air podcast brought to you on webtalkradio.net. You can also hear this podcast on Spotify, iHeartRadio, Stitcher, and Apple Podcast. I'm Suzanne Harris, and I really hope that you'll join me for our next Books on Air podcast, because remember, you really never know who's going to be here or what we're going to talk about. Thank you so very much for listening.